Here we go. Yep, the red light is on. The red light is on on Twitch. Hello. All right. A minute left. We're back. All right, hopefully that there is someone that's going to chime in soon. Hello? No one in the chat yet? Ah, uh, maybe I'll type something. Hello? Hey, yeah, there we go. Here we go. Now we're moving. Now we are moving. Hey, K. Hey, V550. Hey, Ramza. Jake. DD Ban. G. Rossi. Crip. Khan. Ooh, Butte. Mir. Sorry, I'm not pronouncing the full. Uh, I'm not pronouncing the full username. That's that's fine. Hey, Maya. Hey, Maya. Hey, Mir. Hey, Butte. Thanks for joining in. Okay. So, first and foremost, since you are all here, first thing that we need to do is we need to do a video check and mic check. Video check. Mic check. Are we good? Can you hear loud and clear? Uh, I need some feedback. I need some uh, comments. How's the mic? How's the video? How's the audio? Do we sound okay? Do we have picture quality problems? Okay, audio is great. Okay. Uh, we can never, ever assume. Uh, remember one year I gave a, wasn't like a couple months ago, I gave a presentation, especially if you're streaming, it is not okay to have just okay video and audio, especially. Um, one thing I always like to demonstrate is watch what happens. Like, can you notice a difference? This is, this is why lighting is important. Now, I just turned on my, I turned off my light. And it just never seems to amaze me. Like, everyone always say, like, the lighting makes the biggest difference in the world. Hey, game. Hey, Netflix. Hey, good. All right. So, uh, it's 4.31. 4.31. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Um... Welcome to a brand new season. Yeah, the camera doesn't focus. Yeah. Yeah, welcome. Hey, Sam, Sam. Uh, yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. Brand new season. Season number seven. Season number seven of uh, my introduction to security course offered at Tufts University. Uh, here's the first thing I have to say is, my name is Ming Chao, Associate Teaching Professor. Hello, hello. Um, yeah, this is season number seven. Yes, yeah, season number seven. We've done this for now going in, did I start this in fall 2020? Uh, into, and uh, done it fall, spring, fall, spring, fall, spring, fall, spring. It's going to be over four years soon. Going to be over four years soon. Um, and usually on the very first session, on the very first day, I, uh, I address the issue of why do I stream? Why do I continue to stream on Twitch on Thursdays? Uh, and my answer largely has been the same uh, for the past many seasons. Um, like, do I enjoy doing the streaming thing? Like, do I enjoy Twitch? Do I enjoy the conversations that we have on Twitch? And the answer is absolutely, absolutely. Um, first and foremost, Twitch is so much fun. So much fun. But I think this year, um, especially this season, um, It certainly has a bigger impact. Yeah, never before I had to watch an ad to join a club. Yeah, you can, uh, I know that if you are a registered user and a follower, yeah, you're fine. 
Hey, it's no different if you ever go to, hey, you could be worse. I mean, you could be YouTube. How often do you get non-students in your stream? Quite a bit, and that's one of the beautiful things. Hey, Mystery Flower, how are ya? Quite often, and I'm going to get to that D-band, uh, D-D-band in a, in literally like in a few, both in a few moments. So why in the world do I still continue to do this streaming thing on Twitch on Thursdays? Point number one, and this has been, this was the underlying reason why I started streaming um, on Twitch since fall 2020. Cybersecurity education is still uh, badly, badly needed. It's still badly needed. Uh, there is just a huge demand for uh, not only technical, but especially cyber content. Yeah, you can find it on YouTube, uh, but people still, I mean, I've been finding it's that they really want more of it. They really, really want more. Hey, Crispy Nuggets, how are you? Um, so that's the underlying reasons, like numbers one and 1A, is, you know, cybersecurity education is still, I mean, still badly needed. I mean, we got most K-12 to schools and uh, sadly, most colleges and universities, especially computer science program, still don't even offer basic introduction to security, uh, introduction to security course. It's, it's really sad. And yeah, this is the year 2023. Yeah, it was a problem in the 2000s, but it's still a problem now in 2023, which is not good. Reason number two is to democratize the education, really. Um, we know that places like Tufts is extremely expensive, but... Um, you know, it's extremely expensive, also inaccessible to a lot of people. And so point number two is to democratize the, uh, democratize the education, make it more accessible to people outside, like people who really can't afford like a four year, really expensive college education. I mean, it's expensive these days to go to college. Um, and at the same time, the skills are badly, 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 badly needed. Um, so it's to democratize the education. Hey, Bean Boy, uh, slept. Yes, hey, hey. Uh, that's the number, reason number two why I offer, why I opened up my course. And I like to tell people it's also a nice recruiting tool. Um, it's a good advertisement, outreach. Uh, it's a, this is a great platform to do outreach. Uh, for those of you who are on chat and wondering if we get um, trolls uh, every so often, not so much. I mean, I do have my magic finger on my iPad here and just, you know, block people. And usually I find that the conversations are much, much, are pretty damn engaging on Twitch. I'll be honest uh, with you all is that uh, teaching really uh, becomes less of a thankless job, especially now that I open it up to the world. So as... Uh, DD ban asks, like, how often do you get non-students in your stream? Quite a lot. Uh, in fact, that's one of the beautiful things about Twitch uh, and why I chose Twitch as a platform because no one knows if you're a cat or a dog on uh, uh, online. But furthermore, you know, unless you really revealed your username, uh, no one knows if you're a beginner, uh, a learner, uh, a cybersecurity professional, uh, you're all in the same room. You're all in the same room. Um, so there's no way, which is kind of nice, because I hear it all the time from students is that when you shove a hundred people in the same room and you're trying to get question and answer, it can become really uncomfortable. Like, let me ask you this. Uh, let me ask you this. It's like, I'm sure a lot of you are really, really uncomfortable, like, especially nowadays, like right, with, you know, with, you know, illnesses and stuff. You don't want to be shoved into a big conference room, like a big, you know, lecture hall with 100, 200 students, and you never can get a good engagement that way. Hey, Judge or not? Hey, Mocha. Yeah, about that desktop, Mocha. Uh, yeah, there's a reason why my desktop is like that. Yeah, in some level, exactly. It's... Some a level of anonymity is greatly appreciated when asking, absolutely. And that's the reason why I always find that the questions are so much more better and engaging when you have that. Like, I can't even tell if you're a student in my class or not. Like, I can't. I just can't. Uh, Twitch, having these sessions actually removed not only, not only, democ this not only democratizes the education, but... Um, 
Also removes a lot of the physical barriers. Apparently at Tufts, like if you want to have a classroom that's over a hundred people, you only get like six, seven options. That's it. So physical constraint is a serious problem. Uh, is a serious, serious problem. Um, so this removes a completely barrier. Also, what's nice is uh, in terms if you ever want to rewatch this again, yes, it's going to be export. Uh, this is going to be made available uh, to rewatch again. Uh, it's also going to be exported to you. This is going to be exported to YouTube without the chat uh, for closed captioning purposes. And let's make no big mistake about it. No one wants to be on another damn Zoom call. Like, no one wants to be on another damn Zoom call. And Twitch is fun. It's a lot of fun. Okay. But this season, uh, I want to give a shout out. Um, and I want to give a shout out to a certain group um, that I met with uh, a month ago. And, and that is the White House. Yeah, the White House. Uh, recently, the White House published a National Cyber Workforce and Education Strategy, Unleashing America's Talent, published in uh, July 2023. And yeah, there is, uh, there's a couple of passages in here uh, that shows like, yeah, the importance of democratizing the content and the education making, you know, improving people's skills. Uh, here it is, is I've used data and tools to guide investment in foundational cyber learning opportunities. Um, want to obtain low cost and free foundational cyber skill classes and tutoring. Again, let's go back to my first point, uh, is that cybersecurity skills are badly, badly needed. And there's a huge demand for these content. And this is something that I've done for you know, this is now season number seven. Um, promote economic and societal benefit of foundational cyber skills. And what we're doing here on Twitch ties in very well with this plan. Where, uh, with the strategy. And that being said, I want to give a shout out. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to uh, Haley Ring, uh, Julie Klein, and uh, the acting uh, National Cyber Director, Kemba Walden. Um, I had the uh, honor of meeting them last month and talk about this uh, last month. And I want to say thank you to, uh, to Kemba, uh, to Haley, and to Julie uh, for their time meeting me, with me. Um, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, God. Hey, uh, hey, Anchor. Uh, yeah, you're tuning in from work. Yeah, let's not reveal where you work, but... Um, do I need to update the, hold on, hold on. Do I need to update the title of the stream? Ooh, yeah. Why didn't I, I mean, I, that's so weird. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, thanks for, I, I swear I did that today. It didn't get cut over. Hold on. Thank you so much for finding that. Hold on. Let me, let me. Thank you for finding that. I did that. I thought I did that on Twitch earlier today. I mean, it's on the schedule, but I did, guess it didn't cut over. Hold on. Time out for a second. Hey, uh, Anchor, um, yeah, things are not good right now, if you understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, Anchor, um, things are not good right now, if you understand. Yeah, how about that? Um, yeah, crispy nuggets. Crispy nuggets. We good? Yeah, I mean, uh, the stream information updated? Nope, it's not updated. Nope, not updated at all. Hold on. Yeah, Anchor is a former student here. Episode 1, Season 7. Go. Oh. Did, uh, did it change now? Double check. See if it changed now. No, it did not change. I'll fix that. That's weird. Yeah, hopefully things will get better. Yeah, Crispy Nuggets, thanks for the fine. I don't know what, I mean, I can't fix it on my, uh, on my iPad here. Uh, well, that's not good. 
But I'll, yeah, I do have to fix the uh, update of the title of the stream. Don't worry, I'll fix it when we do an export. But thank you so much. Yeah, Anchor, always a pleasure to see you. Always a pleasure. So, what we want to do today, today's session is, uh, well, what is today's session? So the official course website that's available to the public is cs116.org. cs116.org, most labs, um, and uh, readings, and notes, it's all publicly available. So the first lab in uh, the security course uh, is working with the command line publicly accessible version of lab one. This is made available to everyone. And in the very first lab, in this very first lab, you also get to play capture the flags as well too. So this is your first lab, but I guess wondering that here's the thing is, wait, um, why? Why in the world is the first lab on the command line? Why? Well, I wrote in here, said, yeah, this is a largely a hands-on course, and it is essentially that if, you know, it's an important skill for any good security practitioner. What does that mean? What, why? Uh, like, what's the point of the command line? Well, here's the reasons why the command line is so critical. This has got to be the first hands-on skill you got to have. Uh, especially if you're taking this security course, and actually if you're working with a lot, any system, really, it's to understand and work with the command line. Why? Well, reason number one. Um, actually, let's start with reason number zero. We're all typists. You know, we're all like taught, and in, you know, we're all typists to start out with. That's reason number zero. I want to credit Norman Ramsey uh, for, for actually saying that many, many years ago. Uh, the command line is versatile. Uh, it gives you a lot of productivity, uh, gives you a lot of accessibility, uh, and also scripting purposes as well, too. What does that mean in terms of scripting? Is a lot of tools are like, on the command line are built based off of other command line tools. Okay. In terms of accessibility, we can't assume, and um, when I used to teach web programming and engineering, uh, one of the things that people uh, get to realize right away is how many visually impaired users that there are. And so the command line is something that everyone can use. I mean, especially when you have to type text. Number two, not everything can be accomplished by fancy graphics and interviews or interfaces. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of systems, such as like servers, do not have a graphical user interface at all. So it's not like you're going to be clicking and pointing at things all the time. Um, and of course, that also there's a good reason for that. Hey, the more uh, t the more graphical user interfaces, uh, the more graphical stuff that you got. It also means there's a bigger attack surface. What that means is more bloat probably more bad code uh, and more opportunities for if someone gets into a system, you get a remote execution of commands for good and bad. Actually, that's a good and bad thing about the command line skill is later on in this course is that a lot of people, you will be actually attacking and breaking into a system that I create for you. You have permission to do that, legal permission. Uh, and when you get into system by and you get into systems, you're not going to probably get a graphical interface to play around with. You're going to have to, you know, know your way by using the command line. Um, last but not least, a very important one. A lot most security tools are command line based, and in fact, and I'll say this again, a lot of security tools are not only just command line based, but based off of other commands as well too. Hey TJ, H, how are you? One quick, quick note is, is that we're talking about Linux and Unix commands here, or star Nix command. So what we will go over, what we'll actually do today, is uh, these won't apply for if you're on Windows PowerShell or Windows CMD. Um, 
You can use uh, the Linux slash Unix commands on Mac OS, Linux, of course, any variation of Linux, such as Ubuntu, Kali, um, uh, Debian, Red Hat, list goes on, and even Windows, if you have the uh, Windows subsystem for Linux installed, which is now uh, published and made freely available by Microsoft. So, now you got, you're going to see the gist of how these uh, Twitch sessions are going to be run. Um, I'm on a Mac OS right now. Uh, I don't know who, I forgot who it was. I said I have a nice desktop. Yeah, let's, well, let's, 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 uh, let's, let's worry about that now. Let's, let's just deal with that. So, I'm just going to fire up my favorite tool, the terminal. Okay, can you all see? Is this text good enough for you? Is this text good? Or do you want something bigger? What do you want? You want to say you want bigger black and white or you want green? Alright. This looks good. Alright. Okay. So let me ask you this. How many of you have actually formally have gotten... Have anyone... That, you know, I think a lot of you folks, I would assume that a lot of you have... Uh, you know, I talked, but did have anyone ever gone through like a even an informal course on using the command line? Like, what do they do these days? I don't know. How did you have to learn the command line? Or was there any talk or was there any any day that you had to go through? Someone water. Like, what are you? How do people learn this stuff? Okay, you got to learn it from work. Office hours, learned it from CS11, CS class first, it was also a lab, big data, okay. So, um, when I was a student at Tufts, I want to give a credit to Alpha Couch. And I started off with data structures with the CS15. Oh man, so it was all over the place. So we have, like, the answers are like all over the place. I mean, we have... Anchor, always a pleasure, man. You know where to reach me. You can always text me. Or uh, let, We didn't want to text because of things have gone wrong horribly. Always a pleasure to see you, man. Always. Um, Alva Couch would usually have an evening where he would spend two hours literally doing this. Uh, uh, this type of training session. And power through. Oh, I mean, you got the... I mean, judge or not, you got the... You had to deal with the, 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 the hard knocks way, which is like trial by fire, okay? So, for those of you who have, like, uh, that have Mac OS or have a Linux command line terminal is, um, your first thing is, let's say, for the sake of argument, you fire up the terminal right here, and you're like, okay, what the hell is going on here? So, here it is, I got a blinking cursor. You got a blinking cursor, usually the first thing that we will actually, you will see is uh, the timestamp of when did you last actually open up the terminal. This thing right here, it said for me, is Mothership colon uh, documents. This is, uh, it's going to show you two information, two pieces of information. Mothership is actually uh, the, com my computer name. Yeah, my computer, my, my workstation uh, is called a Mothership. Here, after the colon, typically after this is like your current the folder that you're working on, okay? And you see where's that them chow? That's my username of on my on my Mac, okay? So you can actually see where your username if you go. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Yeah, who am I? Will actually show you your username. Uh, and typically, hopefully, your username is in all lowercase letters. Uh, there are certain characters that are frowned upon on a Unix slash Linux file system, uh, especially white spaces. Do you see a file with a white space here on my on the desktop? Yeah. Okay. We are, okay. This one should be fine. There's no white space here, but uh, this picture right here. Yeah, that actually has a white space in there. And we can show you what happened if you actually work a file with a white space on here. Bad form. Typically, if you're working on a Unix or Linux file system, like including Mac OS, ideally, uh, your file should be in all lowercase uh, letters and numbers. 
uh, yeah. Who am I? So the whole purpose of the who am I command is to show you your username. Now, the next important command I would like to show you is, okay, what does who am I really do? What does it really do? I want to introduce you to the manual. M-A-N. The man command is a manual. So if I type in man right now, hit enter, it's not going to, it's going to give you all this mess. It's like, what? What is this? I'm going to hit the Q. All right. Just man is not good enough. So it's going to be man followed by another command. The manual, give me the manual for who am I? Here it is. It's nice and simple. I said, okay, so Rob Graham said something about the manual. Is This is not supposed to be a user manual. It's just an elaborate document that gives you all the full information about a command. Yeah, so who am I dis uh, displays effective, uh, eff effective user ID. The who am I command has been obsolete by the ID. Oh, interesting. And it's equivalent to ID minus UN. The command ID space minus P is a different number. Okay. All right, here it is. Uh, who am I utility displays effective of your user ID as a name. Okay. So, yeah, you have to read a little bit. Uh, if you ever want to clear the screen to make your terminal screen clean, it's clear. Clear. Man clear. All right. The man of clear is uh, to clear the screen. Yeah, clear the screen if this is possible. One quick note here, and this is extremely important for each and every one of you here. This course is very different than, I mean, you probably know that, or I mean, you know that already, but especially when it comes to labs and assignments, they're not one-offs. It's not like in other academic classes where you do one assignment and then you kind of forget about it. And then you, you and then something different for assignment number two, something completely different for assignment number three. No. The skills that you will need, that you do, that you learn in each and every lab, you actually need it for future labs as well, too. Especially when it comes to Linux commands, like we're going to use the command line quite a bit in this whole class. So the skills really build upon each other. So it's no one-offs. Okay, where am I? Where the hell am I? Ah, oh, command is not fine. All right, all right, all right. Where am I? So we know who am I, but we don't know where am I. Command is not found, but there is actually no command. There's, there's, there's none. The, really, if you want to see where you currently are on the file system, it's PWD. And this will give you your directory structure of where you are. And where I am is slash users slash mchow slash documents. And this will actually mirror if I actually, if we're on Mac OS, if I actually go to your home, yeah. So it's gonna be slash users, your folder slash your username, mchow. This is me, and then there are documents. All right, and that's my documents folder. That's where I currently am. Whoa, can I list all the files? In the folder, you bet. LS. LS is the list. All the files and folders in the fol uh, in the current working directory. LS. So currently I have Boot Camp, Defense Against the Dark Arts, Open RCT. Yes, I do play Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, Virtual Machine, Ghidra, Llama, My Course Website. Not Uber, I got a few things here. And this should actually correspond. You actually go to the the graphical interface now, look at my documents, and you can see it correspond to each other. You see Duke Bootcamp, Defense Against the Dark Arts, the open BB terminal, open RCT, you name it. Okay. So okay. So the next thing is, however, a lot of commands such as ls also have correspond, have flags that you can use. Let me do a man ls. So the ls command is what it is, list directory contents. Okay. So for each operand, uh, uh, names a file, yada, yada, yada. ls displays his name as well as uh, 
any requested associated information. Okay. There are a lot of options for LS. But the one that I really want to show is the lowercase L. A lot of options. Also really important, you're not going to learn this overnight. It takes at least 10 years to be really good with the command line. So you're not going to master the command line overnight. You do need extensive hands-on practice. I mean, I've been using the command line since 20, like 1998, and there's still new stuff I learn every day. Here it is. List, that minus little l, it's list files in the long format described in the long format subsection below. What the hell is that? Uh, you can also move up the uh, 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 the manual and the minor, and there's also a minus little a. Include directory entries whose name begins with a dot. Okay. Now get out of the man page. Hit the Q, letter Q. Now, what I want to play with now is both the option of minus L and minus little a. So this is what they call long format. So if I do ls space minus little l, capital uh, lowercase l, watch what happens. You notice is that the result, the output looks a lot different now. Is when I did the straight ls, it just showed boot camp, defense against the dark arts and all this. But you don't get all this information. You don't get all like this. If you do long format, you see a lot more than just the folder or the file name. And what's really important are a few things. We'll worry about this in a few moments. You have uh, uh, two columns here where you see M Chow and staff. The M Chow, this column here, is who owns the file. M Chow owns each and every one of these files. The staff is the group who have access to these files or folders. A group is, well, it's like a group. For example, on the Tufts Computer Science Network, uh, there is a group called students. So students will have different permissions than another group called faculty. If you are a student, you will not have access to any of the grading directories, uh, and uh, shared folders for faculty meetings. You won't have that. If you are a faculty member, if you are a faculty member, you will actually have access to grading folders, uh, meeting minutes, you name it. Okay, so that's the importance of groups. This is for access control purposes. Uh, the date here, uh, you see September 4, uh, August 22nd. See all these uh, these dates here is uh, this is when uh, the folders were created. Okay, the date here is a date and time of when the folder was created. And now for the most important part uh, of the long format uh, file permissions. Okay, so. How does file permissions actually work? Let me uh, open up Visual Studio Code and draw it out for you. So, file permissions on Unix slash Linux look like the following. The first thing that you see is you see a letter D. So, D equals directory, okay? A dash equals uh, a file. And if you see something called an L, it's a symbolic link, which is AKA alias, AKA uh, uh, shortcut, okay? So the first character is usually, the first thing that you usually see is either a blank, an L, uh, or a D, and there's maybe a few other things. But if you see a D as the first thing, if you see a letter to the lowercase d, it means directory. And sure enough, this entire folder where I currently am 
in the document, it these are all directories. Okay? Now, then you see tuples. R, W, X. Okay? You see R, W, X. The R, W, X means um, R is for read. W is write. X is execute or open. Okay. These first three couples are permission that owner, well, owner or you, uh, owner or user has. So right now the owner and the user is M Chow, me. So I have read, write, and execute privileges to this folder. Okay. Then you see R dash X. The next three tuples here. R dash X. Hey, Oblivina, well, hey, how are you? Long time, yeah, long time, no stream, and it's nice to be back. Hello, hello from Europe. Yes, hello. Yes, you have a, what, six hour, four hour time difference? R dash X is, these are the permissions that group has. Okay, so the group has read and, uh, well, sorry, read an executable permission. So that means that anyone else in the group has permission to uh, read the contents of the directory and also execute it, but can't do writing, can't like save files into the folder. And the final tuple, okay, read dash X, the final three here. permissions that the world, i.e. other people have. Everyone else. So everyone else in the world, if they ever get into this machine, or you know, they have another account on this, my machine, they can read the folder and execute an open, well, execute to open, but you can't write. Okay? So if you want more about Unix permissions, Next file permissions. I want to go to the Cyber City one. Is that there? That's a good one. Linux size is good. All right. The basic uh, file, uh, basic uh, Linux permission model works by associating each file, system file. System file also include folders with an owner and group, uh, and assign permission uh, access rights for different classes of users. The file owner, the group, others, everyone else. And here it is. And this is exactly what I said. Uh, this is a good one. So I'm going to make a copy. Yeah, the stream will absolutely be made available uh, after uh, it ends. Absolutely. 11 p.m. Okay. So the very first thing that you see here is a file type. The owner permissions is a uh, First three tuples, and then followed by the group permissions uh, and the other permissions. Okay, alternate uh, access methods. That's five. We don't usually need to worry about that so much. Uh, the owner and the group. Okay. Uh, yeah, the owner and the group. Exactly what I said. Okay. And then the first character uh, uh, indicates the file type. It can be a regular file. Dash D or a symbolic well, what I got everything that I said. I didn't read this I didn't read this document before uh, beforehand. So in the permission above, uh, read write dash that read dash dash read dash dash means that the file owner has five uh, uh, read and write permissions. The group and others only have read permissions. Okay. Yeah. Changing file permissions. So there's a couple ways to change file permissions. There's, well, we'll get to that in a few moments. I'll, I'll just leave this up and running. So yeah, and so everything here has the same file permissions. Okay, 
So now let's have some fun and let's actually, we'll come back to file permissions in a bit. We're changing file permissions and all that. What's the difference between group and everyone else? Okay, yeah, the group, every, okay, so everyone else is, everyone else is, that's a good question by Cry Morale. The difference between group and everyone else is, if you're not the owner and you're not, it doesn't belong in a group, you belong to everyone else. So that's really what the difference is. Um, where this becomes extremely important is uh, when you're on the web. So when you're setting up web pages and stuff, every web user outside of the system is automatically what they can consider other people, others. You would hope that if a web page is made available to the world, it is readable by everyone else. However, it cannot be uh, edited or modified on the system only unless you are either in the group or you are the owner or the user or the owner of the file. Yeah. So uh, let's do a couple of hands-on examples. Okay. Let's do a little bit more to illustrate this. So I want to do ls minus la now. So notice, or you can do minus a. You can do this as well. well. Let me just clear the screen. LS space minus lowercase L space minus lowercase A. What this will do is it will show a lot more files. Does anyone notice a big difference between LS minus L and LS minus? Well, I'm going to clear the screen. You can also chain flags. So you have minus lowercase L and A together. You get the same results. Notice something? Anyone notice the difference? Does anyone notice something that is now a little bit different? The dot files. Here's what dot files are. If a file starts with a dot, okay, okay, dot means current working directory. Dot dot means go back up one a directory. But you also see files with a dot. If a file starts with a dot, like we have dot ds underscore store and dot localize, that means they're hidden files. Hidden files are typically used for secrets and configurations. If you want to go back up one directory, if I do uh, what you do, something called change directory, man cd. Oh, that's terrible. cd is a change directory. I can do a cd space one dot and I get the same folder. But watch what happens if I do cd dot dot. cd dot dot means go back up a directory. And if I do an ls now, this is my uh, home folder. And the home folder is designated by tilde. Okay, it's by a little tilde. So if I do an ls minus l a now, and this is my home folder with all sorts of hidden files and hidden file configuration stuff, and also my application, my desktop, my documents, my download, my library, my movies, my music, my download, my pictures, and all that. If I do an ls minus l, you see, see the difference. But dot files, dot a one dot and no name after it, current working directory. Dot dot means go back as uh, the previous directory. A file that can starts with a dot is a hidden file. So I'm going to clear the screen. I do ls minus la again. And um, yeah, I see a dot file. One is called, uh, what's a good dot file? Ah, here it is. A good dot file is my um, profile. Yep. Here is a hidden here where I have highlighted. This is a hidden file. This is actually my configuration of my entire terminal. The permissions is only read write uh, by me. No one else can read this. So if you want to actually look at the contents of this file, you can do a few different ways. You can do one way you can do more. So I do more dot profile. And this is my configuration. You can do cat as well too for concatenate. Cat 
dot profile. And you can see everything in one screen. There's also less too. Some people like less better than more. Man, more. Really? Less is the opposite of more. Oh, yeah, ha, ha. Oh, less is a program that is similar to more, but does not allow movement uh, in the file. Okay. So, I'm going to clear the screen now. Let's go to the course website. The course website is inside documents. So, if I want to go into, I can change directory to go to documents. CD, do an LS. Now we're back where we were. So if I go to CD Defense Against the Dark Art, now this is a course directory, and I can do, uh, let me give you an example of a long file, index.html, this is a home page. If I do more index.html, look at what happens. And then, of course, if I want to scroll line by line, I just hit the enter key, but I can't, I can, oh, actually, I can go back up. Yeah. I don't know what they're talking about with less than. Or I can hit the space bar to just fast forward. Okay, clear the screen. If I do cat index.html, it just spits everything out to the screen. Cat is used for concatenate. So yes, you can concatenate multiple files. So if I clear the screen and I do cat readme.md, which is a markdown file, you can see the contents of the markdown file. You can do cat readme.md and also any other file like index.html. So what this will do, this will concatenate both the readme.md and the index.html file and just spits both files out to the screen like this. Yeah. Yep, there you go. So I'm gonna CD now. All right, now we're getting we're getting somewhere. If I go to CD, change directory, but I put a tilde, I go back to my home directory. PWD where am I, slash users, slash mchow. Clear the screen. LS minus L. Good. All right. So, let's work a little bit more with file permissions, and let's do some fun stuff now. I want to go to my desk now. Actually, let's play with the desktop. So, we've done, um, oh, one thing I should also show you is how the file system works is if I go to change directory space and then the slash, this is the root. The root is always a slash, so everything slash starts as slash. Just want to give you a rough idea of what some of these important folders are. Slash var. This is where um, you will find like system logs. So if you cd slash var slash logs, this is where you see like system logs and stuff. Very important if you're on servers. Let's go back to the root again. Um, slash etc. We're going to see uh, use slash etc. These are just where a lot of system configuration files are. Not only for system, but also for applications. Okay. Um, but if you go to cd slash lowercase users. Now for some reason on Mac OS is case insensitive, which is kind of wrong, but on most other Linux system it is case sensitive. So if I do an LS now on slash users, you can see it's shared and that's me, I'm Chow. So I can do cd slash uh, cd into uppercase users slash I'm Chow. And here I am, I'm back in my home, my, my, my working, my, my home directory. Now let's go to our desktop. CD desktop. Now I'm going to clear the screen and you see here on my desktop, I have not one, but two files. I do an LS right now. And you can see two files. One PDF and one PNG. Okay. One funny trick in Mac, if you have a Mac, 
It's uh, just an open command. Open WTF girl dot PNG. Ah, remember I said something about white space and files? This is going to screw you up. Here's an example. The files slash users uh, sl uh, m slash users slash m chow slash desktop slash WTF and slash users that like, you know blah 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 girl dot png do not exist. This is why having space in file names on a Linux user system can really really mess you up. So if you actually want to open up the full file WTF under, uh, with space girl.png, you have to put quotes around it, double quotes around it. Again, this is the reason why you don't want to use space and file names on a Linux and file uh, Linux on a Linux and Unix system. If I do open, I just open the picture up. There you go. Fired it up. Look at that. Hey Alex, how are you? Oh. Okay. So, I want to create a brand new file on the desktop. You can do touch. If you, uh, if you want to create a brand new file, you got, uh, I'm going to touch a file called .txt. It is. You notice something when I did touch? The file did not exist. But once I touch a file, it creates it right away. Yeah, man touch. What touch does, change file access and modification times. There's also, this is one trick that if you have, uh, where does it mention? Ah, here it is. If any file does not exist, it creates it's created with default permissions. Nice. So I do ls minus l now, and now you can see the file is hacked.txt was created at five well seven five twenty p.m. Eastern time. This is a file size in bytes, zero bytes. The WTF girl picture is two hundred. The uh, 232 bytes, two, 232,000 bytes, which is 232 kilobytes. And uh, the PDF file is over like 1.4 megs, something like that. All right. So now we have created a no uh, blank text file. All right, we did that. What happens if you want to modify the timestamp? If I do touch half.txt again, watch what happens. So if touch, if you use touch on a file, if you touch a file that does not exist, it just creates it for you. If you touch a file that exists, watch what happens. Changes the timestamp. Ooh, uh, yeah, the beginner to learn how to code, I would go with no starch press, their Python book. You just, it's worth every penny. No starch press. notestarchpress.com and it's a Python book and they usually have sales they're so good can't go wrong a Python. No, no. there's a programming with Python book here really recommended highly recommended anyway going back so touch if you touch a existing file it just changes a timestamp now let's create folders to make a folder, all you have to do, you have to do something like command make dir, mkdir, make directories, make dir, and I'm going to make a directory called, uh, it just gets a bit annoying to have the browser in the background, make dir, which, mkdir, make a directory called twitch, ls minus l, and you can see my directory called twitch here. 
by default, the folder is read, write, execute by me, read, execute by the group and everyone else. All right, here's a fun trick for you. Let me make the, the let me make the Twitch folder change chmod change mod change the file permissions of Twitch. But you, in order to do that, is ugo plus read. Should read it? Nope, didn't do it. Play the screen. If you hit the up arrow key, go. Oh, you can go back to a few times. You can go back to your previous commands. One way to know is if it starts with a four, that means read only. Zero means no permission. Okay. And so what you can do is if you want to make a folder only uh, read but not execute and not write is chmod. Four is uh, read for, uh, you know, read only. Zero for the permission for the group. Zero for everyone else. Yeah, that worked fine. LF minus L. Here we go. We have a directory. We have a directory now. We just created a directory that is read only by me. Not executable, not writable, not uh, by anyone else, not readable by, not read, write, or execute by anyone else. Hell, I can't even execute the uh, 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 folder. Watch what happens if I try to go into a folder that I can't execute. CD Twitch, permission denied. That's not good. So, chmod is a change to file permission. So if I want to change uh, the Twitch folder to be uh, read and execute, no, it's to be write chmod 500 Twitch, do an ls minus l now, execute, uh, read and execute. So five, if you see a five, is read and execute. So now if I do cd twitch, that I can do. I can cd dash dash, go back. What happens if I do change mod 600 twitch? You're going to see a pattern here. Read write. Mm. So four, a four is read. Five is read execute. Six is read write. Seven is everything else, like everything. Read, write, execute. So change mod. Yeah, let's do change mod. Seven hundred. Do an ls minus l. Read, write, execute. Perfect. Exactly what we want. Okay. So if I can do chmod seven seven seven. Hey, uh, of Twitch. Then everyone and everyone in the world can do. I don't care what you are. 777 will cause some major security problems. I mean, everyone in the world can read, write, and execute stuff into the folder. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to go into... Wait a minute. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to clear the screen, and now I'm going to move files into the Twitch folder. So move file is MV. So if I do MV hack.txt into Twitch... So I'm going to move the hack.txt file that I created into the Twitch folder. There you go. Now I am also going to move the WTF girl. Now remember, because it's a stupid thing as a uh, file name. But I'm going to show you a dirty hack. You can do move to also rename a file. I'll show you that in a bit. Because of the file name. Yep. Move. There you go. Now I want to get everything on the Twitch folder. T Twitch. LS. There you go. Hacked. So yeah. Okay. Uh yeah. 
if I want to see, uh, so you may be wondering, what is it like to view a binary file? Well, you can do cat, and then the PDF file, and then you get a lot of stuff. Yeah, you can even do cat on any type of file. And then, but unfortunately, you see a lot of binary characters first. Ooh, that's not good. If you want, um, oh, the hack to rename a file, you can do this. MV. I can, you can do the source and then the destination to WTF.png. I do an LS. That's a rename. You can see the W is a picture about renamed to WTF. Yeah. Now, earlier on, we did cat, but if you want to see um, only human readable strings of a file, strings. No binary stuff. So, I'm going to clear the screen. Man, strings. Strings, find the printable... Uh, objects, uh, printable strings in a object or the binary file. Okay. Do an ls minus l. Hey, just for fun of it, I'm going to do a change mod 400 on hack.txt. Do an ls minus l, and you can see hack.txt is read it's only readable by me only. So if I ever want to use my favorite text editor like Vim or Emacs or whatever, I use Vim. I do vimhack.txt, and you can see it's read only. Col uh, colon Q to get out of here. Change mod 600 hack.txt. Now it's read write. The file is read and write. So I do vimhack.txt. Now I'm going to do insert mode. Click on the I key. Hello, all. You happy people. Shout out to mystery underscore flower. Hi, Bell. Yeah. All right. Hey. Colon. Right. Colon again, Q, and now we'll notice what happened. If I do an ls minus l, you can see now my hack.txt file went from 0 bytes to 72 bytes. Why? Hat. Okay. There you go. Exactly what I say. How about finding things? Can you find things in this file system? Yep, sure. Uh, one thing that you can do is grep and uh, well, let's do a man grep. Let's we'll see how it works. Grep utility actually searches any, any file, selecting lines. All right. So you can grep flower. And uh, WTF.png, nothing. Does flower exist in the PDF? Oh man. Nope. Does the flower exist in hack.txt? You bet. You bet. Okay. If you actually want to view uh, uh, find stuff in a file system, man, find. Grep is wonderful to like find like keywords and all that stuff in a file. Walk to a file. Uh, walk uh, file hierarchy. Okay, so I do find, so I would do 
space, uh, I will do find in my current working directory the file name uh, app. Does that work? Nope, didn't work. But what happens if I do wildcards? Like match anything and anything that had the word hacked in it. Yep. Current working directory hacked. Okay. If I want to take a look at all the configure any file that ends in .conf in my file system, I do find in the whole root folder minus name and then a space. List all the files that end in .conf. And I got a lot of, yep, here we go. A lot of permission denied. A lot of permission denied. A lot of permission denied. There you go. There's a lot of files on my computer that end in .conf. Jesus. But if you want and go back up, and you want to remove a lot of permission denied errors, and you want to be temporary root or temporary god mode, sudo. sudo space find space the root directory space the minus the name. So now this is going to look for all the files that end in .conf in the whole file system. And hopefully um, I have permission to go and look through the whole system. When you use sudo, you can enter in your password. Wouldn't you like to know? And you will notice the difference. Now it's even looking into my file system. Like even system level stuff. That You can see the permission denied goes away. Be careful if you're on a, a managed network, like on a company, company server, or on a uh, on Tufts Computer Science, we have system administrators. So if you use sudo, um, yeah, we catch that. Uh, because a lot of people like to use sudo to do nefarious things. Uh, but sudo is one of the things that you should not need to run. Uh, if you're on a shared system, like, again, like Tufts Homework Server, and you use something like sudo, it gets flagged. Um, everything that you type in gets flagged, especially the pseudo stuff. And you get an angry email from our system admin, just to warn. But this happens everywhere. It's a pretty common procedure everywhere else. PWD on working directory. If you type history, history is one of my favorites. This is actually a history of all of the commands that you have used. Yep. Okay, yeah. History. Oh, that doesn't give me. History just lists all of your previous commands. Okay. Uh, what else do we got? All right, do an ls. Let's start removing files. If I do rm, uh, you know what? I'm going to make a subdirectory. Just for fun. I'm going to make a subdirectory called. I think I know who this is. And I'm was here. Make the. Bean boy slept. So I have two folders here. Yeah. Now I just created three new folders. To remove a file, sorry, 
rmwtf.png. I guess just for the fun of it, just watch what happens. Bing! Picture goes away. RM uh, just created this folder. RM, the folder, Austin M was here. Watch what happened when I hit enter. Can't, doesn't work. RM, der. Okay, here's the thing. RM is only useful for files, not folders. So you can't delete a folder with straight RM, with no flags. If you want to delete a directory, it's RM. D-I-R. Austin M was here. LS. Okay. So, to, this is a difference. RM is to remove files. RM to remove directories. If, but it's a trick though. So, I'm going to go to mirrors uh, G and I'm going to touch a file. Uh oh. No file extension. But if I do a RM dir M I R Z A G E E, watch what happens. Directory not empty. So now you also learn RM dir can only remove directories if and only if it's empty. So what you can do, the ugly way of doing it, is go into mirrors uh, G and just delete the files individually. But that's dumb. You don't want to do that. It's a pain. In if you want to just remove everything, this is where you want to be really careful. You want to do an uh, remove everything and everything that is mirrors uh, G, including every including the folder. It's RM space minus RF. This is recursive delete, including the folder. I don't care. Just blow everything away. I'm too pissed off. LS. There you go. Now, if you want to delete everything and everything in a folder and you don't care, this is the dangerous, dangerous thing. I think you know where I'm going at. You hear the infamous, did you ever learn this before? This is the infamous joke, or not so. RM space minus RF space star. This is one of the deadliest command, if not the deadliest command out there. You do this, you blow away everything in the current folder. Then you cd dat dot dot up. And then now you can do an rm dir twitch. Folder was empty. And there we go. And so here we are. Uh, I think we got everything. Uh, I think I covered all everything I ever really wanted to for, for today. Uh, who am I? PWD. We showed you the root file system and how the file system works, starting with the, the root, the manual, uh, change directory file permission, ls touch, make the remove the cat, less, more, find, strings, move, history. Is there a way to get more information? Yes. Cat one, yes there is. Is there a way to get more information on these files? Date and time access, yes there is. CD tilde, CD documents, right here. Let's do a man, uh, find, yeah there is a date issue as well. Yeah, we did this in one of our uh, Linux trainer exercises. B time is one. Well, now this is where we had to bring up our friend. I know that there is. I even did file permission, we even did that. Ah, uh, Linux command find by time. 
You can do searching as well too. Oh my. To, uh, find all the files, modify. Oh, here it is. Here we go. Here we go. I'm going to share this. To find all the files modified on a certain date, accessed on a certain date, or files which had their permission changed on the day. There you go. So it's like N E W E M R T. This is for uh this is for a cat. A lot of options. The C time, oh yeah. There's a lot. If in that case, uh, aren't you searching for a specific, yeah, not getting date information on all. There's so many different options, like off the top of my head, yeah, I just see, you, aren't you searching for a specific, I think you are, you are searching for a specific date. More than 30 days ago, less than 30 days ago, exactly 30, there's also period of time as well too, C time, good lord. So there's seat time as well, too. Yeah, that's not, I'm not so sure. So here it is. So uh, A time, C time, M time. A time. All right, we're we'll right here. C, C time. Yeah, there's quite a bit of options. Yeah. Uh, DD Band, what's your best tip? What would be your best tip for people who trying to learn all the commands and play? Just play. I mean, the terminal is free for you to use, and just really just play. That's just, just do stuff. Seriously. Like clear if config. What the hell is that? Dabble. Really, that's the, oh, that's really the way to learn all the commands uh, specified and like that's re seriously like the way to learn the command line is just play you're not going to learn the command line terminal by just reading the damn manual you can't learn uh, Linux commands in the terminal by just reading the book you got to play it's like cooking like you're not going to learn how to be a good cook until you cook like you got to play and again, this is extremely important that you're not going to master it. You did also very important again, DD band. You're going to need, you're not going to learn everything overnight. You're going to need at least 10 years. I know this is not an answer that no one likes to hear. It takes a good decade to be really, really perfect, really good with the command line. We also have programming as well, too. Like, you got to play. Like, this is not one of those things, especially most things in tech anyway. Like, you just can't learn by just reading the book. Like, no. All right. So, folks, we are now out of time. So, next week, it's one of my favorite topics because, well, I'm actually working a whole bunch of stuff right now. So, some of you actually wonder, like, what in the world is a wall of sheep? How do we actually rip out username and password for admin secure uh, from, from the network? How do we reconstruct like files that you upload and download? Network traffic analysis. That's going to be next Thursday here on Twitch. And now I'll see you all next week. Uh, thanks for joining in. Thanks for tuning in. And I'm going to make this available right now to I'm gonna make this recording uh, not only on Twitch, but also on YouTube for closed captioning. Take care, folks. Have a good night.